Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tenno Life, my name is Seb and today we'll take a look at Warframe's poster boy, Excalibur. Now, Excalibur is what I like to call a hybrid caster frame, sort of. I mean, he makes good use of mobility and utility from his skills, while also excelling at swordplay, sporting in a hefty all-rounded 100 health, shields and energy, with an average speed and more than average armor of 225. Alongside with his skills, you will soon see why Excalibur is truly the jack of all trades in Warframe. First off, with his recent rework, he received the Warframe passive, which gives him a 10% attack speed and attack damage while wielding longswords, dual swords and nikanas. Excalibur's first ability, Slash Dash, does exactly what it says. It dashes, then slashes everything in a cone in front of you, while rendering Excalibur immune to damage in the process. Pretty simple concept really, but in game it has a surprising amount of uses, mostly damage and mobility. And oh boy can it dish out the punishment! This skill, believe it or not, for its cost, does the highest damage per energy cost in the game. I mean, this ability takes into consideration your power strength, your melee mods and it gets amped up even more by your combo counter, which makes it insanely powerful for its cost. The augment surging dash can further help you achieve this, causing every enemy hit by the skill to add to the combo counter, which can swiftly grow given the fact that the range and the targeting cone gets affected by power range mods. Radial Blind, Excalibur's second skill, is without a doubt his most important survival tool. He casts a surge of light that initially stuns, then blinds enemies for a good amount of time in a radius around Excalibur, but do take into account that only targets that can see Excalibur will get affected. Also, enemies that are blinded are susceptible to finisher attacks. But wait, slapping on this skill's augment, Radiant Finish, further increases the finisher damage dealt by up to 300%, making it exceptionally easy to dispatch pesky heavies and ancients alike. Radial Blind's duration and range are affected by range and duration mods as well. Also, this skill has perfect synergy with Banshee's Silence. As you've probably guessed, a blind and a deaf enemy isn't much of a threat for murderous space ninjas armed with rocket launchers, hand cannons and katanas. Excalibur's third skill, Radial Javelin, is without a doubt his most lackluster skill. I mean yeah, it's useful in low level difficulty areas where it can wipe an area clean of enemies, but when things get a little bit tough, then this skill quickly becomes less than subpar. This skill summons a Skana near an enemy in range, which then stabs the enemy doing damage and briefly stunning it. This skill doesn't have that much going for it though, I mean the range and damage are affected by power and range mods, but even that won't help later on, especially since it can only hit targets that are aware of Excalibur's position. It does, however, have nice synergy with Banshee's Sonar, since the summoned Skanas have a chance to be summoned right in front of Sonar's sweet spots and may deal up to 1100 increased damage if Banshee is modded for power strength. So I guess there's that, but really now, are you willing to play Russian Roulette with a level 95 of near Bombard? Or several? Yeah, I thought so. But do not fear Tenno, because that's where Excalibur's signature skill, Exalted Blade, comes into play. Summoning an ethereal blade into his hand, Excalibur gains access to a new set of combos unique to him while also altering some of his other skills. Excalibur's melee attacks and the energy waves that he summons with them do damage based on your equipped melee mods and the amount of power strength you have. The waves themselves can also apply effects such as status procs and can also leech life via the life leech mod. Excalibur's dash attacks also end with a weaker version of Radial Blind, which has no cost, making it an exceptionally good crowd control when needed. It's also worth mentioning that while Exalted Blade is active, Excalibur automatically parries all incoming frontal hits, taking 60% reduced damage. This happens even when doing other actions, like attacking. Also, using Slash Dash while this skill is active will result in each attack releasing the energy waves, further increasing Slash Dash's already insane damage. This skill has great synergy with Banshee's Sonar. Hmm, kinda makes me wonder, why don't I see more Excaliburs and Banshees together? 
So, targets marked by sonar can be hit on the sweet spots by the energy waves, resulting in hits over half a million damage if Banshee is mounted for power strength. But due to the awkward way the waves appear, it's usually rather hard to hit the sweet spots. So you better start praying to the RNG gods. Exalted Blade also has great synergy with Limbo's Banish, making Excalibur unhittable while his energy waves can still do damage to the enemies outside of the Rift Plane. Now, Excalibur has several playstyles, but an all-rounded Excalibur build would look something like this, which is also the build I use in most situations. A build focused on maximum damage would look a bit like this, while a build focused around crown control should be similar to this. And now, let's take a look at Excalibur's PvPing potential. He's again, like in PvE, one of the most balanced frames, with all-rounded stats, sporting a decent survivability, but also mobility. I, personally, use the Vital Systems Bypass mod, which grants HP regen at the cost of increased shield recharge delay, since I like to engage in a fight, kill them, run away, and pick my next fight carefully. Most of the time, anyway. I highly recommend using Swords and Blades while playing with him in PvP, due to the fact that he gets bonus damage and attack speed while wielding them, which makes him excel at melee combat. Do take into consideration that most enemies will try to run away when their HP is low enough in a melee fight, and you should equip a weapon that's very good at finishing off fleeing targets. My personal favorite being the Lex Prime. Using Slash Dash to gain distance on an enemy that has a bad short range weapon, then slicing him up with your melee weapon is an excellent way to dispatch snipers, especially if Slash Dash connects with the target, because if it does so, it staggers them briefly, interrupting reloads and most other animations, which can be very useful at times. Just be careful though, that the damage immunity from PvE while dashing is not present in PvP. Blinding a target that gets into melee range with a shotgun will cause confusion and will give you time to quickly perform a dash attack, hitting the target and hopefully placing you behind, allowing for a quick kill before the target even reacts to your new position. Take care though, because casting the skill will not stun the enemy like it does in PvE, and enemies turn with their back at you will only be blinded for half the time. Radial Javelin can be used in conjunction with explosive weapons. When hitting multiple enemies that get spooked by the explosion and try to scatter away like the cowards that they are, or to simply finish off fleeing targets. And Exalted Blade, while lasting just mere seconds in PvP, does so much damage that when used in a big fight, it will certainly take the enemy by surprise, most often than not allowing you to score a couple of kills before the skill even ends. I highly recommend you also channel when attacking with this skill in PvP, since it increases the damage even further and more often than not the fight ends way before your energy does. Excalibur is a quick to learn frame in PvP, and not that hard to master, allowing even the beginners to be useful and not get overwhelmed by the more complex mechanics that other frames have to offer. So all in all, Excalibur is an excellent all-rounded frame for beginners and veterans alike hitting just the right spot between damage, utility, and survivability. Thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen, please leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what Warframe would you like to see next, and I hope to see you all next time.